Guys, we've got one of the coolest antennas I have ever seen that we're gonna take a look at today. This is the Dually by Justin K4QCD. Now what separates this from the pack, not only is this a 49 to one, this is also a nine to one. Now I do wanna say this antenna was sent to me free of charge by Justin K4QCD. And if you're the kind of person that's triggered by videos like this, I suggest you go watch a Smokin' Ape video. So first I'm gonna give you a quick overview how to build this. This is actually ridiculously easy. The instructions at k4qcd.com are very, very easy to follow. Then I'm gonna take you back out here into the field and I'm gonna show you what I did with the radiating element to make not only a linked end fed half wave, but also how I made that into a linked nine to one with the same radiating element. And I'm gonna show you how amazing the SWR and bandwidth is on both 49 to one and nine to one. So let's get to building. All right, so here's all the parts. We're gonna get some clear heat shrink, two toroids, two zip ties, two BNCs, a capacitor, some nuts and uh, bolts there, the PCB board, nine to one and 49 to one and four lengths of wire, two red and two copper. Now, the first thing we wanna do is wind our toroid for the 49 to one. So we're gonna take the red magnet wire and we're gonna fold back about six or seven inches. Then I'm gonna grab a hold of the loop we just made. We're gonna twist a whole bunch of times. until we do the whole darn section here. If you're a fisherman, you'll notice that this resembles very closely the haywire twist. And once we're done, we should have something that resembles this. We wanna leave about an inch or so of this wire sticking out. We're gonna need that later. And now we can go about wrapping our toroid. So now we're gonna come in from the bottom. We're gonna wrap our primary around two times. So we're something like that. All right. We're gonna leave this little tag wire sticking out right there. And then we're gonna wrap this guy around 14 more times with a crossover on the eighth turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna wrap the eighth section. We're gonna cross over to the other side. So that's the eighth turn. And we'll continue wrapping. And hopefully when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 total turns of the toroid. Now we can cut off the excess wire. This is gonna be the antenna side and we can cut that little loop off and we're going to start soldering. So the antenna portion is gonna go in the antenna hole, our twisted Shield portion is gonna go in this bigger hole, and then this wire is gonna go in the center. Sort of like that. So now I'm gonna use a razor blade to scrape away some of the enamel so we can get a good connection. Now we can cut these wires flush. This is the center wire here and the shield. And we can go ahead and solder them. And we'll do the same with the antenna side. Just like that. Next we can take our capacitor and we're going to Stick it in the two holes that say cap, flip it over. And I like to separate the wires like that to hold it in place. And then we'll solder. And then we can snip off the excess wire. 
like such. And with some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, you can clean off your contacts and have a nice pretty looking antenna. Now this next part, we're gonna wind the nine to one and we wanna be careful. We're gonna use three wires. Notice I have gold on the outside and red in the middle and gold again on the outside. And we're gonna wrap this nine times, being careful not to cross these wires. Wish me luck as I have never wound a nine to one toroid in my life. Oh, come on, baby. And nine. Hey, that wasn't too bad. Now I've trimmed off the excess wire to make it a little more manageable. And we're gonna insert gold, red, gold into one, two, three. And then gold, red, gold into one, two, three. I'm just gonna dry fit these for now. So now we can snip all these wires and solder them into place. And there we have it. That was actually a little more difficult than I thought it would be. These ones I really struggled with. I had a bit of wire coming out where these ones I just cut the wire perfectly flush with the board and those went a whole heck of a lot easier than these. So cut the wire nice and flush to the board and make your life easier. Now we can install our BNC connectors and he recommends throwing a rubber band around here to hold it in place. I don't have rubber bands so I'm hoping I can just maybe tack that center pin and then attack the four ground connectors. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, it worked. So that'll hold it into place for now and then I'll come back and solder that up a little better when I get the ground on. Just like that. And now we can do the same thing for the other side. And now we have two soldered connections. Beautiful. Next we're gonna attach our bolts and nuts and wing nuts. So we're gonna have this guy sticking out here and then we attach the nut. And we take the other one, stick it through the other way for the nine to one. And then lastly, we have the counterpoise. So the idea is we have one of these wing nuts on the counterpoise. Okay, that's just gonna stay there. And then we're gonna have one of the wing nuts on either of the antenna side. So if we're using a 49 to one, we'll take the wing nut off, put the wire on, screw it back on. If we wanna use the nine to one, we unscrew this, put it on the nine to one side. And now we've just got a couple finishing touches. We're gonna to take these zip ties and we're gonna zip tie our toroids together. And we're gonna take off the wing nuts, insert the transformer into the heat shrink making sure to not cover our antenna connections and heat shrink away. And that, my friends, is a completed antenna. All you need to do is cut a random length of wire. He recommends 41 feet for the nine to one. And then however you wanna make your NFED half wave with the 49 to one, roughly 65, 66 feet of wire, and you are on the air. How cool is that? Now here's where the magic happens, tuning. First, I put a, I crimped and soldered a ring terminal on, and I started with the 17 meter element on the 49 to one. 
I just put a little stake in the ground and I put a carabiner through my tape measure and the hole there. And then we just go down all the way. I cut this, I think eight and a half meters long. I did it all in metric, but after trimming, there's the link at about 23 feet, okay? So if we pull this taut, the end of the loop here is right at 23 feet. All of my links, starting from the loop, going to where I solder it into the link, are three inches. And that's consistent across all the links, okay? So once I had 17 meters tuned, I then went up and made the 20 meter element. And that ended up being about, oh, 29 feet, five inches, roughly, at the loop, at the end of the loop there. And then we went up more and I made a link right at 41 feet, okay? So the end of the loop is right at 41 feet. Again, three inches of link. So when I unlink this, like such, then I have a link, a 41 foot non-resident link for the nine to one side. And when I wanna get back on 40 meters, I just link them all up again. And then the 40 meter element, all of these elements turned out to be shorter than what they typically would be. I don't know why, but here is the end of the wire. Uh, to the very end of the wire, we're about 63 feet, three inches there and it is so resonant on all the bands. So now I have the antenna set up as a sloper on a 30 foot mast. All of the links are connected, so we basically just have a 40 meter end fed half wave. And take a look at this. There's 40 meters. I did tune this towards the bottom so it wouldn't affect 10 meters towards the top as much. But look at that, pretty much under 1.5 to one across the whole band. Here's 20 meters, amazing, probably 1.2 or less across the entire band, 15 meters. Look at that. Again, 1.1, 1.2 across the whole band or less, and 10 meters. Most of the band under 1.5 to 1, 1.25 at 28.55 megahertz. All of the digital, all the CW, all the sideband portion, even up into the FM portion, you're just fine. Now we'll take a look at the 20 meter element. I unlinked the 40 meter element and I've just got the mast propped up in one of the grills that's out here. Uh, and take a look at this. Huh? Not too shabby. And now here's a look at 17 meters. I actually screwed this up. I did all of this out in the field soldering and everything. And I screwed up the wire for 17 meters so I had to redo it when I got home. So it is a little long, but even still, we're 1.3, 1 1.4 to one across the whole band. It's actually about 500 kilohertz uh, too long. So I'll probably cut off maybe three or four inches or so to get that back into shape, but fantastic looking. Now the cool thing is all we have to do to switch to a nine to one is unscrew the wire from the 49 to one side and screw it back in to the nine to one side. Typically with nine to one antennas in my experience, you need to use either a radio like the Zygo G90 that has a really good tuner in it, or if you have something like the 7300 or radios that don't have a tuner in it, or uh, you know, a lot of radios will only tune up to like a three to one. This antenna on the nine to one will tune with the 7300, not in emergency mode, I've got a little bit of a counterpoise put on. I actually forgot the counterpoise at home, so I took the 40 meter element off my Pactena N-Fed half wave, which is 30-ish feet long, 33 feet long, something like that. And let me show you how well this thing tunes on a nine to one with the built-in three to one tuner that's inside the 7300. Here we go, nine to one antenna, 41 feet of wire, bottom of 80 meters with the 7300 tuned up no problem let's go up to the top ish look at that 40 meters no problem 30 meters done and done 20 meters just like that 17 meters 
Done. 15 meters. Done. 12 meters, it's not so happy. Doesn't like tuning 12, so we don't get that. 10 meters at the bottom of the band. Done. Let's go up towards the middle-ish. Done. Let's go up top. Done. So I don't know about you, but this dually antenna is freaking impressive. I don't use the term game changer ever. I'm gonna use it now. This antenna is a game changer. There's so many times that I wanna use a nine to one, but I opt for a 49 to one because it's resonant. Knowing that I can tune everything except for 12 meters, my 7300 is insane. When I travel, generally, I'm either gonna bring my 705 or my 818. I've got a tiny little uh, tuner for it that would be perfect for this thing. I've got two antennas, one wire that does it all. How can it get any better than that? Links to this will be in the description. Justin, thanks for sending this out. Thank you for watching Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. We'll see you next time. 73.